That's horrific. And he looks emotional. When it got to the decider, I said to myself, right, if Anthony wins this, he's deserved it. He's, he's you know, got the better of me and, um, you know, every credit to him. So I kind of had that mindset, but I was still hungry and determined to try and get there myself. Um, and like I say, it was sort of there for me, then it was taken away, then it was there for me and taken away again. You know, that moment on the green, I played safe. All I'm thinking is just get away from the pocket. I didn't even think of it going in. He's interested here. Where's this Please green heading? Me. Please tell me he's not fluked it. Please tell me he's not fluked it. He has. I just thought, oh my God, I don't want to leave this over the pocket. And as it's dribbling in, um, you know, I just, just felt really guilty. I didn't want the match to end that way. But then at the same time, you're thinking, oh my God, I could be in a world final. So it's just such mixed emotions. This is up there with the great matches here. Looks good. Oh, what a shot. One. I don't think I've ever seen a deciding frame. 94 points to 65. <laughs> yeah, I think he said after the match that the, the snooker gods were against him. I suppose mm. it just sums up that, you know, a match where you can have so much brilliant play and it can go on for so long, it, you know, it can just rest on such fine margins, can't it? Yeah, the fine margins in this game are just incredible. And the short, can snooker behind the pink. Ten. Can snooker behind the pink. You couldn't make it up. I've lost major finals on, fa on fine margins, so I've, I've been there and had those kicks in the teeth myself. Um, so, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's just one of those. Um, I remember Anthony being really unlucky at the start of the decider, who's on 40, went into the pack off the black, hit them lovely and landed on nothing. Um, you know, if he lands on a the ball there, he probably makes a century and that's the end of that. So, um, yeah, sometimes when Lady Luck's on your side, you've got to make the most of it. And, and I'm sure it wasn't the most pleasant frame to be in, involved in, you know, given you know, how, how difficult it must be and how nervous you must have been. But I think Stephen Hendry said on commentary it was the most remarkable frame he'd ever seen at the Crucible. So, you know, in retrospect, looking back, it, given all the, the history that's happened at, at the Crucible Theatre, to be, to be a part of that is it, quite special, isn't it? Yeah, um, I can honestly stay, say I've still not watched that frame. Um, I don't really want to watch it. I know obviously you guys are doing a nice piece on it, ready for this year's World Championships, so good luck with it. I won't be watching, but um, yeah, I hope everyone enjoys it. Um, and in terms of you know, what came after that, it didn't go your way in the final against Ronnie, but it's, it's the biggest match in, in snooker. You, is there a lot you can take out of that? Did you learn quite a lot from the experience? Yeah. Um, for me, it was all about the off-table stuff rather than on the table, which, you know, looking at things going forward is a massive plus. Um, you know, I felt like I was there on the table when I needed to be. It's so clean for the best part of six weeks to eight weeks. And off the back of that semi-final, you know, I just wanted to have a blowout and, you know, you can't really do that. You know, we're going to have a crowd the whole way through this year with it being a pilot event with the return of fans. So after what's been such a difficult year for everyone, it, I'm sure that'll be quite a, a, a cool moment to be able to, to do what you do best and play in front of fans again. Yeah, um, some of the most amazing messages I've had this year have been from people saying, you know, we, we just unfortunately can't get to the live snooker. We love it so much and um, we're still cheering you on and, and things like that. And, you know, my coach Barry Stark, who's obviously been isolating due to the, the coronavirus, um, you know, very early on in the season, he turned to me and said, I'm looking forward to watching you play today. It's giving me something to look forward to. So that makes, that, you know, really hits home and makes you realise that, you know, there are, you know, plenty of people watching and enjoying their snooker. So, you know, hopefully, obviously, they're all going to be back live and they can all enjoy the, the two weeks, you know, with us at, at the same time. I pre prepare for Sheffield like no other. Uh, tournament, um, you know, completely sacrifice everything for that event and just go hell for leather for it, really. Um, and yeah, you know, just driving up to Sheffield, you see the signs for the snooker and um, it's just an honour to be a part of it each year.